What's going on guys, Challenger, and today we are talking Season of the Seraph Impressions and giving my thoughts on all things so far. And there's a lot of love for this season so far, I will be entirely honest with you. So far, initially on launch, this is by far my favorite season this year. And this is excluding Season of the Risen because obviously it was tied to the Witch Queen expansion. If you're tied to an expansion, you get a lot more brownie points than you usually would. So yeah, we're going to talk about this compared to Season of the Haunted and Season of Plunder first day one so one right off the bat server wise this was actually the smoothest launch i have ever had for a uh season so far it was a little mind-boggling i loaded in right away no error codes nothing so performability it was pretty good i did notice a bug with my controller even though i play mouse and keyboard i just don't disconnect my controller because i don't like disconnecting uh disconnecting ports a lot so that's the only bug i ran into besides that and the, obviously the challenge bug everything else has been running pretty smooth but Let's talk narrative because I feel like this is something a lot more people have cared about. And this is something I am really passionate about when it comes to Destiny 2. The story is kicking off in one of the strongest ways possible. Osiris is back, Anna Bray is back, Mara is back, and Rasputin is front and center. As a war mind, we must rebuild. This has been something we have waited for because if you don't know, Season of the Rivals, we lost Rasputin. He uh, kind of crashed when the pyramids came and uh, just gave up. So. It's been a very long time, two years to be exact, before this story has developed. And even Osiris is being like, Anna, like, bro, what you've been doing? You haven't done nothing when I was disposed of. So yeah, it's um Anna Bray. Come on, girl. You should have just talked to Clovis Bray and give us a reason to talk to her because Clovis Bray is back, the AI. And uh, finally, since Beyond Light, he has some use and some narrative purpose. And he is going to be a big part of it. I don't know how big in terms of good he might do, but... um. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I, I still don't trust this AI a bit because he's a narcissist and, you know, Clovis Bray was a very bad man. So we'll see how things line up in that regard. He is in the engram. He was, to, you know, in some, I don't know the technicalities, but yeah, when I saw that, I was like, oof, I don't know if I like that. But yeah, here we are now. Activities, activities, activities. When a new season, we get new activities and some stuff is time gated so far. Now, obviously the dungeon comes out Friday. That's kind of time gated, but we have a new exotic mission, which is time gated and sounds like it's going to be a, a ever changing mission or a progression mission itself of different components, unlocking different catalysts for an exotic. It actually sounds really good. We'll get into that soon, but the activity is like the heist battlegrounds and the, I guess you could say narrative missions are phenomenal. I think Bungie needs to stop with the public event type of missions or activities like we saw in Season of Haunted and what we saw a six man catch crash in the pirate thing. It's it's not fun. Just give us three man match made stuff. And uh, I, I, just, I feel like it's great. You know, Battlegrounds and Season of the Chosen was phenomenal. I will say the only six man I did like was the Season of Spicer one with the uh, override or whatever. That was pretty cool. But there was also a different activity we could farm. PsyOps was also pretty great, a three man activity. So just Bungie, please stick to these three mans. It seems to be your your butter. It seems to be the best for the player mentality. Everyone feels like they're doing something and it feels like it's plentiful. It feels fun and it's easy. It's easy for people to do, even if they want to do legend stuff. So again, stick to three mans, please. I think it's for the best. Now, the one complaint I have on the activities is replaying the narrative missions. Now, at the end of this week, there is a really cool area in, I think, the Cosmodrome, but also looks like it is from Rise of Iron a little bit based on where the Traveler is and all that stuff. I wish we saw more of this. I wish we can replay this in some way for more value. I don't know. I feel like this is kind of a waste of space and we should get a chance to play these. I, I don't know. It's just really really mind-boggling that you can only play these weapon uh, missions once per character if somebody hasn't done it i mean you can play it multiple times if someone hasn't played it but again you have to rely on someone that hasn't played it yet to replay it it's a headache it's annoying it's something i don't understand you do all this work for a one-time playthrough let us replay these missions in some way somehow you know had value to them i don't care but yeah that's a, it's a little disappointing in that regard but it is what it is now time gated stuff i think this is something i've been calling for for a while it's i think a strong way to make the seasonal model feel not so repetitive and give people life to do throughout the season now december 20th it seems that we are going to be getting this new exotic mission so it's about three weeks from now so that gives us some time and it's an involving mission so even after that first week it's not completely done we have other catalysts to get other weapons to it sounds like we craft this weapon it's pretty cool I like the idea, I like the concept of it, and time gate some stuff, guys. I'm not afraid of time gated stuff. Give me things to do and then more things to do because 
I don't want to play this game overly much in the beginning and then just stop, not play at all. I did that with Season of Plunder and it didn't really feel good. So let me play th throughout the whole season, separate some stuff, and I think we'll have a better seasonal model. Now, obviously, there's some big changes that they should be doing, but that's for next year. We have to wait and see in that regard. But if they think time gated stuff is good, this may be a hint that they're going to do more of that, and I'm all for it. Armor, on the other hand, there's going to be plenty of loot. We have tons of weapons, prize of weapons. I think all this stuff looks pretty cool. New SMG exotic, lit. There's also a, a new bow coming in the dungeon and a new pulse rifle with the exotic mission coming. I think this is pretty cool. This is pretty lit. I'm excited. Knowing new exotic armor, I'm actually happy about that. I, I don't know why. I feel like they just all sucked for the most part. I, you know, Laura Lee was the best for Titans, but besides that, like the armor, the arms were pretty bad. Uh, the other arms are pretty bad. I, I don't even know if there was another one with the Witch Queen that there was two, but they all been kind of whatever, not memorable. So if they need a reset to think of more ideas, I'm all for that. But yeah, it's just no new armor, exotic armor. That's fine. But the ornaments. I'm going to be spending money. That's all I can say. But besides that, there's really not much to say. It's day one. I'm really enjoying it. I'm going to be making more videos. So definitely hit that subscribe button and the bell if you're new here. But drop a comment down below. Tell me your thoughts on season of the Seraph. Is it good? Is it amazing? Is it just the same old? You don't care. Do you like this model? Do you guys want more expansions uh, or at least more DLCs that you don't you know, get big updates? Like kind of like Cho uh, Curse of Osiris and the Warmind stuff. Drop a comment down below with your thoughts. But yeah, besides that, if you guys enjoyed this video, found this video informative, definitely drop this video a like. But that's all I have for this one. Shannon here, and I'm out. Yeah.